On the formulas tab, in the ribbon, you will see a list of them here, and two of the more prominent ones, although when you first see some of these, you're not quite sure how you might use it, involve the word find, which almost defines itself, and the word mid. Take a look at how we might use some of these. Small situation here, small example, the part numbers being used in this organization are based on the time-honored concepts that the character position of these part numbers has some meaning. And in a variety of different ways, you will here and there hear about a descriptive number that where maybe the third character, the third and fourth characters together represent either the size of the item, the cost of it, where it might have been made, the year, the color, all those kinds of things. And for whatever reason, it's important in, in this particular example, maybe to see if the letter G is in here. So maybe it's context, particular position, maybe not. We just want to know if that letter exists. Now, we're not really talking about another feature that here and there might be what you need, and that would be the feature off of the Home tab, the extreme right grip called Editing, Find, and Select. So sometimes you might just want to find and see if the letter G is in here, and you don't want to match the entire cell contents if you're trying to look inside of it. Maybe we're just looking here, and we could find them one by one, or maybe just go to Find All, and we'll get a little list here. And you'll see that it was found in cell A3. You can see that clearly. Actually, there are two Gs in there. And also in cell A5, it's the second character there. So that certainly has its role to play. But sometimes we need that information right here, because maybe based on that, we might want other information in a worksheet. So one approach to this is to use the function called find. What are we looking for? Put this in double quotes. Double quote, we're looking for a G. Now. I should be capitalizing it right because we're looking for a capital G. We'll get back to that issue in a bit because that's of concern too. We're looking for the letter G, comma. Where are we looking? We're looking in cell A2. Now there might be times when you need to start not at the leftmost position of the cell. And if you do, you need to put in a third argument here that indicates the starting character. Now that's a much more rarely used feature, and so you very often won't need any more than what we're seeing right here. We want to find the letter G in cell A2, and the result here, if found, will give us the character position. And of course, you can see here it will not be found, so we will get this as a result. Simply by dragging this down, we will see, and of course, we can see it clearly on the screen where this is working. And in situation number two there, that's actually row three, G was found in the second position. I'll notice it didn't find the third one or it didn't mention that there's a second one in there. That's the first place it found it. In both cases here, it finds it in position two. Now, I had mentioned here the idea that I used uppercase about lowercase here. Is this going to work here? No, there is no lowercase G. Now, there might be times when you want to find a G if it's uppercase or lowercase. In that situation, what you would want to use is the function that's very similar and same general syntax and everything, but it's called search. There we go. And the search function, let's focus on this one particularly. Search says I'm looking for G. Now, even though I use lowercase here, it finds the capital G. And so you have to think out different variations on when you are specifically looking for upper and lowercase. Do you want to use the find function? But if you don't care, use search. Now, another function that allows us to work with that data and sometimes either by itself or in combination with a find or search is a function called mid. Now think of the word middle here, and let's not take that word literally, but the mid function allows us to pull out information from the middle of a character, and again, not necessarily the exact middle. Here's one example, and possibly you might approach this differently too by taking the information in column C and splitting it into different columns. But we might want to extract from here the state. In all cases, the state enter here is two characters, but where is it? If we were to approach this by just looking at the mid function or thinking of it only by itself, we'd say, well, what are we starting at here? What are we trying to find out of here? And so we're looking at this text right here, but we don't know where to start. In the first case here, Boulder, Colorado, B-O-U-L-D-E-R, that's seven characters, the comma is eighth, then a space is ninth, we need to start at the tenth position. 
obviously in the next entry it's not going to be 10 or the entry after that. So sometimes you will use these together and not always I don't mean to suggest that the mid function is used always with find because it isn't. But there can be situations where you need to pull out data from a given starting point. So in this case, we might start with equal find, just like we did in the previous example, and what indicates the end of the city, the comma. So we're looking for, within double quotes, the comma. And we're looking in the cell right here. So this, of course, is going to tell us where the comma is found. It's in the eighth position. So armed with that knowledge, we can then use the mid function and say we're looking here, comma, and where do we want to start extracting data from? This tells us where the comma is. We want to start two characters later, not one character later, that's the space, but two characters later. So we're going to add two to this, comma. Now, how many characters do we want to extract? Just two to pick up the state multiple parentheses when you put in the closing parentheses, so this will extract the state. Now, if you have any choice in redesign the way this data is displayed, ideally, the data in column C really should be split into three columns. That's a different issue, but we are able to pull out information, in this case, using the mid function along with the find function. Now, based on different needs at different times, and looking back at the data in column A, you will at different times have a different need for this. You want to pull data out of column A. Maybe it so happens that the fourth and fifth positions in column A reflect the color code of the items in question. Equal mid. We're looking at the part number here. We're looking here. And we want to start at the fourth position. In the first example, that'd be the letter K. So we want to start at the fourth position and extract two characters from there. So we want to pull out of that first set of data there, or the first to cell in A2. We want to pull out K9. Then that's what we will see. And you'll see what's happening in the others, of course. Same general idea. We're pulling out information, not necessarily from the pure middle, but the word mid helps us remember what it means. One by one, functions like this are not always that compelling, and yet sometimes used in combination or in dealing with data that we didn't design. It can be extremely viable when trying to extract data from cells that we didn't necessarily design, and yet we have them on our screens and we need to get to the information quickly.